Uh, I want to start not by talking about competition, it's but by talking about here. the... Thank you. Uh, about the uh, the president. Uh, Ursula von der Leyen uh, is, is quarantining at the moment. I'm wondering if the commission is being affected by this uh, and whether or not the commission needs to rethink the way it does business in terms of in-person meetings. Well, we have been rethinking the way we're doing business since the very first day. We had, you know, a full season of virtual uh, meetings. Uh, now, let's see. I think it shows that it's for everyone sometimes to be in contact with someone who tests positive following the rules. I think one can be safe and we can all do our part to make sure that the spread is as limited as possible. So for you, is it business as usual still? At least in the U.S., we're getting, you know, concerns on how the government can efficiently function. Well, you know, we uh, had, you know, the, it was not a test. It was real life uh, all towards spring. We had virtual uh, commission meetings. Uh, we could make the preparation. We could take the decision. We could make the necessary enforcement uh, steps and execute uh, decisions. So it is long tested and it works. Let's turn and talk a little bit about competition policy. Um, Commissioner, do you think COVID-19 has accelerated your concerns around the concentration of power in key industries, particularly the tech industry? Well, to some degree, yes. But I think one of the most important learnings uh, from the COVID-19 crisis is the fact that we have had a dependency on single suppliers. Uh, and we don't want to experience that again. Uh, you know, it took a lot of effort to make sure that also pr production of uh, protective equipment uh, increased uh, in Europe uh, in times where we couldn't have that uh, imported uh, from other countries. So we have learned a lot and a number of these learnings we will of course act upon uh, in the coming month. Can you give us more perspective on that? Well, as said, uh, one of the things that we saw was this single supplier dependency. And, uh, and a lot of businesses, obviously, they take their own decisions to make sure that they are not in a situation in the future where if one country uh, closes down, that also closes down their own, pro their own uh, production. So I think the business community is really taking these learnings on board, uh, but also in some strategic industries, industries that are very important for the functioning of, uh, of society. Of course, governments are rethinking. We in the Commission are rethinking. We will do an update of our uh, industry strategy that was fresh from, uh, from February to make sure that we get this integrated, that sometimes we need to do more uh, to make sure that also strategically we have the necessary uh, to make sure that people can feel safe in every member state. Commissioner, you have the Digital Services Act and new competition tools coming in at the end of this year. You, you spoke at the beginning of this conversation uh, about the fact that we're all getting so used to doing things virtually. Uh, we rely on the tech companies in a way that we have never relied on them before. Um, why do you need these new tools? And do you think that there has been a further concentration of power within that particular space that requires them? Well, it's something that we have been preparing for quite some time. Uh, we have done extensive uh, public consultation. We really think that now is the time to make sure that society and democracy catches up with big tech. Uh, the last time uh, regulation was really passed was back in the digital stone age, the year 2000. So, so now is the time to say with success comes responsibility, transparency. Uh, that people who, who deal with a digital giant, that they know what are their uh, obligations, but also what are their rights, what to be expected uh, when you're dealing with a, a digital giant. I think that is very important because, you know, Europe is open for business. You're more than welcome to be successful. But with success comes responsibility, and that time has come now. So on the flip side, though, Commissioner, is that you also need European technology companies to play catch-up, of which there is a big way to go. How should countries be spending relief money or how to ensure that Europe will have the technology companies to compete, even if you're successful, in stymieing, say, Google or Facebook or Apple? Well, the next phase of, uh, of digitization as we see it, uh, with 5G being rolled out, is very much sort of the business-to-business -business side of digitization. We expect to see a lot of that. And Europe has a very strong industrial culture, a very strong 
uh, culture and, and knowledge base of uh, engineering, uh, also when it comes to digitization. There is an impressive uh, innovative capacity in Europe. What we need is what actually created the U.S. giant, a real uh, digital single market and a capital market that will support the necessary scale-up. Uh, we now have the, the framework in place. Now we need to make it work. Do you worry, though, that in, in this age of COVID, when government is spending so much money, that it will create an even more uneven a platform here in Europe? Um, Germany has the capacity to spend so much more than Greece. As we come out of this, do you think the digital haves and the digital have-nots will be even further apart? Well, this is exactly why we uh, want member states to spend, you know, 20% of the recovery and resilience facility on digital investment, because it is indeed needed and it's needed in every member state, no matter how advanced you are. Uh, and that, of course, will focus minds to say that when we rebuild, we'll also do that digitally and we will make a certain proportion of our investment. We will make sure that that is digital. That is absolutely uh, needed. Uh, because if not, uh, well, then there is a high risk that the, the union will tip. Uh, if you look at the state aid, uh, the budget, it's by now almost uh, 3 trillion euros uh, that member states uh, are willing to support uh, their businesses and, and, and workers uh, in, in doing. Well, that is very unevenly distributed. And, and this is why right now we are trying to figure out how much of that budget has actually been paid out, how much has been used. Because part of my responsibility is, of course, to control state aid, to prevent uh, the unleveling of the playing field and to make sure that we have an integrity of the single market. What's the priority here with all that? Because you're also going to need state aid to rebuild things like travel, leisure, airline industries and sort of bail them out while we're in the middle of COVID, in addition to spending a huge amount on green and green infrastructure. And then now there's this. Like, how do you prioritize how that state aid goes to Greece or then to Italy or to France? Well, we have kind of different measures because it's for member states to decide how will they spend taxpayers' money if a company uh, needs to be supported. Uh, and only if that support will unlevel the playing field, if it's a giant company with huge market shares, will come in and say, well, you need to take measures in order to make sure that competition is not disturbed. And the other side of the recovery is that we have this incredible fund, uh, 750 billion euros, uh, and 20% of that should be used for digital investment in the coming years. And I find that to be very important because in Europe we need also to do things in common. It's not enough that every individual member states recover uh, on their own since we are so interconnected when it comes to the value change, when it comes to how we trade. It's very important that we also have this European perspective in how we recover. It can be investing also in digital skills. It can be investing in some of our common capacities uh, like the high performance uh, computers. So there are numerous uh, things to do. The point is we should uh, get it going because Yes, we may be in a pandemic, but we also need to start the recovery for people to see that their jobs are being preserved. You, you brought up 5G just a moment ago. Um, how is America's policy towards Huawei affecting competition in the telecom space in Europe? Well, that is, uh, that is difficult uh, to see. Um, because the, the telecom spectrum, in, indeed, in all, uh, is, is quite uh, affected by this very important issue of security of 5G. Uh, we made with member states a, a assessment of the security of the network in every part of the 5G value chain. Uh, with member states, we then made a toolbox to deal with the risk of, uh, of the network being compromised. And now member states, they use this toolbox uh, to legislate, uh, but also to make demands on the telecommunication providers to make sure that they have the right relationship with those who provide hardware and software. And, and that perspective, of course, is extremely important for us because 5G will be sort of the data backbone uh, of also in industrial uh, technology. So it's very important for us that this will be safe. So the telcos in Europe are, are influenced in many, many different ways, primarily by the effects of what we do in Europe.
Well, but Guy raises a good point because Huawei really being sucked in the middle of the U.S.-China trade dispute, how do you regulate the market and grow certain industries when there's not a common thread between China, Europe, and the U.S.? How do you avoid getting caught in the middle with that? Well, it's, it's difficult to be caught in the middle because China and the U.S. are very, very different. Uh, we see China as a, a competitor, a, actually also a partner when it comes to climate change, but very fundamentally to a systemic rival because China is not a democracy. And I think that is where you see one of the fundamental differences because we feel that we share fundamental values when it comes to democracy, free press, uh, critical media, uh, and, and this is why we don't find ourselves in the middle. Uh, we find ourselves in a different position with China than w the position we're in with the US. One final quick question, uh, complete change of subject. Do you think there is fair and even competition in the digital games market? We're all watching very carefully Apple's case with Epic Games uh, and Epic's concerns around the way that Apple treats it and the revenue that it derives from it. Are you comfortable with the way that Apple handles that? Well, it's difficult to say specifically, uh, but you know that we have had a number of concerns, uh, sufficient concerns to open cases with uh, Apple Pay, uh, and not one, but two cases uh, with the Apple uh, App Store, uh, because the way uh, people are being treated, that competes with uh, Apple's uh, own services. So we have a number of concerns with the way that Apple uh, do their business in these specific uh, instances.